Hey guys, it's Jessica, the other half of Jessica and Cody, here with another reaction. This is to Blood Drive, episode 2. I really loved the first episode of this show, so I'm very excited to be reacting to episode 2. I'm hoping I get more Mad Max vibey stuff, because I just really love Mad Max, okay? Um, so, without further ado, let's jump into this reaction, and I will see you guys on the other side. Race day two, Arizona. Keep them coming, Daddy. Before it's too late, gotta say it's never Oh! Ew. I so love this thing, so. the finish line's up ahead in a town called Pixie Swallow. Thank God. I'm so hungry I could eat a dick. Who? Nice place. Did you really think our car was the only one with a camera? No. Just play it cool. Just play by the rules, all right? Speaking of rules, those are buddy in the top hat. Yeah, I noticed that. GPS says we're in the right place. Well, who are you? No, ten who is this Joker? Julian Slink. Can't have a mayhem party without our master of ceremonies. Let's go eat. What do you want to talk? There were two of you. There are many of me. I was built to cater to the baser instincts of hard executives, but a glitch in my programming made me capable of so much more. They could not replicate the results in other models, so they replicated me instead. But don't talk Creepy. to me. They're kind of bitches. You're insane. When the great fracking quakes tore this country asunder, Hart was but <laughs> a fledgling tech company, a tiny operation with big dreams. And those dreams were realized by the appearance of the sky. While the rest of humanity ran from the scar, we ran towards it. And the wonders we discovered there will change the course of history. This is my part. We at heart found incredible resources in the scar. Unstable minerals, morally questionable fuel alternatives, unnatural gases, and deep wells of unidentifiable glowing goo with properties... Oh, sure, let's just use all of that stuff. Seriously. The world's ecological disaster was our economic windfall. And now, we share with you the newest member of Heart, the fruits of our labor. We Heart You. You've been complaining for the last four hours and now oh, you lost your appetite. God, please don't eat that. There's something off about this place. I just can't put my finger on it. Just eat. Please don't. So worth a word. Right. Where's your boyfriend? We're just a team for the race. That's all. Oh. I just want to give him a hug. I thought you guys were up. Uh... Yeah. So did I. Oh. So what about you and Grace? Oh. It's, uh... Complicated. I know all about that. Did she make you wear the dog chain when she's spanking you? What? Something like that. Oh my god, what does it's he cold. do to you? You poor man. Yeah. I feel so bad for him. All he wants is his love. I'm sorry. I've, I've got to go and check on my car before I turn in. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't let me stop you. Thank you for chatting. I just want to 
something out. Well, I mean, so you're we're surrounded by hillbilly cannibals. There's got to be more than one way to get to the kitchen. We say we split up. Okay, get up. You're coming with us. We need a lookout. Mm, that sounds messy. I prefer not to get my hands dirty. If the cannibals mess with our car, it means <sighs> they probably mess with yours too. We all need the scholar alive. Yep. Definitely. He's just at all. I said, whose truck is that? And the entire fight stops. Oh, man. You left your dog in the car without cracking open a window. Well, you out of your fucking mind. Oh, my God. That's what he's morally against i mean i agree but damn that's kind of funny mm. yeah. and the fight starts again oh that dog's really cute oh he's got a friend got the hands and everything Politics, pharmaceuticals, medical supplies, electronics. How the hell did you get there? Long story. They have their hands. Can you get they back to LA? Everything. Oh, not now. I got this bomb in my head that'll go off if I get too far away from my partner. Partner? Did you say medical supplies? Yep, hospitals too. And mental facilities. Mental, mental facilities. Yeah. I need you to do me a favor. This woman has a sister, Karma D'Argento. See if they have anything on her. What are the odds? One room with cell reception. Happens to be filled with files on the blood drive. Say great if you're being watched. Found it. Karma D'Argento. Tell me what it says. Cane Hill Hospital. Patient's appearance was bewildered and bizarre. And she only had markings on her arms with some form of needle had been used. Slow as shit here, man. Chris I gotta go. Get the hell out of there, man. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Oh, thank God they got him out. Oh, boy. No! Damn it! We get back on the road. Thanks for saving me. We don't help other teams. I still can't get over that engine. It looks like it's I alive. Again, but this time you've gone to Florida. Come on. Come on, cough it up, baby. Cough it up. Get out of the car, man. Come on. I need your help. Well, the engine needs a kick. Grab these bad boys. Right. Whatever you do, don't let go. We're going to use your brain bomb. Uh oh. What are you doing? The electricity, man. Don't let go. Yikes. Come on, man, you can do it. You can save her. Woohoo! Drive the blood car. Yeah.
Ooh. Yeah, he deserved that. Are you all right? However, you did attempt to contact your former partner, did you not? No, 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 that was just... Mm -mm. Which means before I can trust you, we need to perform some slight behavioral modification. Don't trust the robot, man! Come on, that's the first rule! I cannot wait to see what kind of man you are inside. You never just touched that. You said you're racing for karma, right? To help me. What of it? I spoke with my partner. Heart Enterprises owns Cane Hill Hospital. What? The same mm -hmm. people that put you on the race own the asylum where your sister is living. That's not a random connection. I think you're getting played, just like I'm getting played, and my partner, and who knows how many other people by these diabolic corporate cocksuckers. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry. Grace, come on, let's get out of the road. Come on. Grace, the race is back on. We got go. <laughs> the dog. Come on. Slink is taking us through Utah. So? The day after tomorrow, the race takes us within 30 miles of that asylum. You up for a detour, Barbie? Ooh! that was blood drive episode two i really liked it it didn't disappoint okay so the episode first starts off their car is running low on fuel and they just make it to the i guess pit stop of where the racers are supposed to be at um it's at this I, mean, I don't know if it's a town called Pixie Swallows or if that's just what the restaurant's called. But they all end up at this place. I'm going to say the restaurant's called Pixie Swallows. Um, and a little bit before that, they kind of show the restaurant. People are eating burgers and whatnot. It's all fine and dandy. And then it goes to the back and you find out the burgers are being made of humans. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bunch of cannibals. Um, so Grace and Arthur are sitting in the restaurant, eating their food, minding their own business. Uh, so, th yeah, they, they have no clue that the food is humans. Um, they end up getting more food. Um, Arthur manages to find a payphone to call, um, his partner Christopher. And while he, and, um, while he's doing that, Christopher is still... And the place where the robots got him, he's in this really creepy room and the police officer lady's talking to him and she's like, oh, I'm a robot and I had a, I guess, and I don't want to say a malfunction, but something changed in her and they couldn't replicate it So in other robots, so they just replicated her. Uh, and then she showed him, um, like, an orientation video to work for Hart and it's like, in the frack, we found questionable minerals and glowing goo. And I'm like, oh, sure, let's just use all of this stuff. You don't know what it is or what it does. But let's use it. That makes zero sense to me, but okay. Um, and then she says, oh, yeah, you're free to wander around. So he wanders around. He finds um, his stuff in a box. He finds his phone. He manages to find a room with service. He hears his... Um, uh, Arthur's message and then he uh, uh, calls him back um, during that time uh, the gentleman and the scholar um, oh we find out a little bit about the relationship uh, the gentleman is like using the scholar for um, sex and whatnot and he was uh, the scholar went to the diner to talk to Arthur and Arthur's like, oh, I thought he was your boyfriend. He's like, no, we're just partners for the race. I thought so, too. And I'm just like, he was so sad. He was sitting there all, like, forlorn and sad. And he was like, thanks for talking to me. And then he walked off. Um, And Arthur ate, like, a, I don't, I don't exactly know what he was eating. He was eating something. And he found a fingernail in it. And he 
figured out what it was, he ran and told Grace, and they were like, blah, blah, vomiting all the food up, and earlier in the episode, she was like, oh, I'm so hungry, I could eat a part of a man's body, I'm not gonna say the word, but I hope you know what I mean, and he was like, Grace, I think that corn dog you ate was, she's like, don't say it, and I was like, oh my god, whoa, um, uh, and of course, Christopher, once he found out that the food was human in the diner, he was, like, exploring, and he saw, uh, Fat Elvis, I think that was Fat Elvis, they were, like, using his body as hamburger meat and whatnot, and he, you know, that's, like, that was before he ran into Grace, um, and while all of this is going on, the creepy top hat guy is waiting to meet with people and he is just waiting for a long time and he's sitting with somebody else who goes up there first he gets a job he comes back down he's talking to him he gets so enraged he kills him with his briefcase the robot uh lady comes down is like oh he was our new maintenance guy and he's like oh and she's like we're ready for you now and i'm like oh okay so they they're talking about the race and whatnot and and what they want to do with it and they want to make it a national or broadcast it national so everybody can see it and he was like i don't think the world is ready for that and she was like oh i think we are but we have some concerns mainly about him and whatnot and they didn't think he could handle it but that the stuff that he did in the lobby persuaded them to think maybe you are ready to to do it and he basically promised them that it's going to be super bloody. It's going to be the bloodiest race ever. So, oh boy, I can't wait to see that. Um, cut back to Grace and Arthur. They find the gentleman in the room. The scholar is not there. They ask him, have you seen him? And he says, no, not really. So they realize he must have been captured by the people. Um, and then they ask the gentleman for help because... Um, a bunch of, like, I guess, cannibals came to the diner because it was revealed that they were running out of meat and they wanted to kill some of the drivers there from the race to use as meat. So this giant fight is going on outside of people just killing each other. And they're like, we need your help to be a lookout. He's like, okay. And then he stands up 100% naked. And Arthur's like, I'm never touching another hot dog as long as I live. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And your situation, I wouldn't either. Um, so they end up fighting their way to the diner. They meet uh, Rip Bone. I think his name is Rip Bone. He sees a little tiny dog in a car, and he's like, "Whose dog is that?" He does it. He yells it twice, and the entire fight stops. And then somebody raises their hand, and he's like give me the key, or he's like, first he's like, you left a doggy there, no, the window's not cracked, what is wrong with you, which, I find it really funny that he's fine killing people to make his car run, but he's not okay with the dog being trapped in a car, I mean, I'm not either, but I'll also, I just find that kind of funny, um, so he ends up killing the guy that has the car, he takes the dog out, and we, he, it's his new partner, Caligula, or I guess not partner, but he has, he has a buddy now, and the dog's adorable. The dog is really cute. Um, so Arthur and Grace and the gentleman get into the kitchen. Uh, they end up fighting the people that were making the meat and whatnot. They free um, the scholar. Uh, Grace ends up getting trapped in the meat truck with all of the other bodies that the guy was using to make meat. He tried to escape. Arthur was going to follow in the car, but earlier in the episode it was mentioned the car was running low on fuel and it just wouldn't start. And then they had removed the spark plugs from all of the cars to prevent people from leaving. So he was trying to start his car, it wasn't working, his bomb was like starting to activate. Um, the scholar was like, thank you for saving me, and in return he helped get the car working, even though the, the gentleman was like, oh, we don't help other part teams, what are you doing? Um... So they got the car working. Arthur raced off to find Grace. Uh, and they did a really cool chase scene. He managed to get the guy to stop. Uh, he The guy got out of the truck. He punched him in the face. He fell down. He got Grace out of the truck. She ended up killing the driver with meat hooks, I think, and using his body as fuel. 
Um, and earlier in the episode, uh, he had talked to Christopher, and Christopher revealed, like, yeah, Hart really is involved with everything, and he found out that the facility where Grace's sister is at is being run by Hart. So he tells her this, uh, and they figure out that the next, I guess, meeting point for the race is, like, 30 miles from the, um, asylum where her sister is, and they're gonna try and do a detour to try and get her out. Uh, we also see that Christopher has decided to join Hart, I guess to be, like, an inside man, but that didn't end well. Uh, the robot, of course, knew that he tried to contact Christ or contact Arthur, so she wants to do some behavioral modifications on him. If you don't trust a robot, that's, like, the first rule. I thought everybody knew that, but yeah. Uh, this is a fantastic episode. I really, really loved it. I cannot wait to see where episode three goes. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment down below. I love talking to you guys. I have all of my social media, including my Patreon page. You can be an early access viewer and see things like Game of Thrones, Winona Earp, uh, whatnot early. And as always, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. And I will see you guys here soon with a new video. Bye!